Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses from Vincent and Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with the verse of the day. Today we are talking on 2 Corinthians 3.17 in the ESV. Now the Lord is the Spirit, capital S, and where the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is nothing other than than freedom where the spirit of the Lord is because the spirit of the Lord is so powerful when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead you were sealed by the Holy Spirit the spirit of the Lord we have to allow him to work in us and work through us and as he works in us as we spend more time reading scripture, speaking scripture, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we gotta be careful what we hear, what we listen to, what we fill our minds with, because it really affects our lives. God has so much for us. He has so much freedom for us. But if we're focusing our time and efforts on things that only bind us, we can't walk in that freedom. We can't walk in that freedom. It's like, you know, uh, I don't know why this, this example is coming into my mind, but I'm just going to go with it. It's like putting, you know, rolling in honey and trying not to be sticky. Like, you know, you go digging in a, in a, a honeycomb, you're just going to get sticky. Something might seem like it's sweet. Something might seem like it's good. But you just getting sticky. You're not allowing yourself. You're you're getting stuck. And you don't even realize it. I know for me, um, I had to limit what I watched. I had to pay attention to what I was paying attention to. Um, I had to limit um, interactions with um, people uh, that I was around, um, at times because I would get sticky. Whatever we watch and listen to affects our lives. We are the sole culmination of what we watch, listen to, and the people that we're around. And sometimes we're just in a sticky place to where we can't get unstuck because we're continually exposing ourselves to things that just muck us up and prevent us from getting free. You know, I had to, I had to stop watching horror films if I wanted to stop being anxious um, because you're opening the door to fear. You don't even realize it, but you're saying, Hey, fear, come hang out like there are spirits behind things and we if we don't understand that we will just stay stuck where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom he's the only jesus is the only one that brings true freedom i started spending more time with him through scripture, I had never even read the Bible. I didn't want to read the Bible. I thought it was just a book written by man, a bunch of men and, you know, of their opinions of what happened. I didn't realize it was actually the Spirit of God. The whole canon of scripture was inspired by the Spirit of God and it's living, it's active, it's powerful. I had no idea about that. But until I got into scripture, once I got into scripture, I started getting a little bit of that stickiness off me. The more time I spent in that scripture, the oil of the Holy Spirit, you know oil removes sticky, right? The oil of the Holy Spirit, he's consider, he's um, likened to oil. That anointing of the Holy Spirit would just get all that sticky off of me. And the more time I spent in scripture, and getting to know God more than the people around me, the more I was able to do what I could not do otherwise.
that I got, I walked in freedom. I'm no longer bound by the things that bound me. I'm no longer a drug addict. I no longer have mental health issues. As a matter of fact, I don't have a diagnosis of near one. I am totally free in my right mind. And now who I should have been, who God intended for me to be since before he laid the foundations of the earth, because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But a lot of times we just reject the word of God because it's offensive to our flesh. And it's supposed to be because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Our lives are inundated with the ways of the world, which is Satan's system. Satan doesn't want us to prosper. Satan doesn't want us to walk in freedom. He wants us bound and he wants us to decide to follow him and reject God, the only source of true freedom through Jesus Christ, so that we don't ever realize the freedom that we have. But there is freedom in Jesus. The gospel is good news. We all, every last one of us, are on our way to hell. Every last one of us, because we were all inherited a sinful nature. You don't have to tell, teach a child to be bad. You, teach, you have to teach a child to be kind. You know, we're all selfish um, individuals in our carnality. We're all born with that selfish, sinful nature. Jesus is the way out of that. It's not about following a bunch of rules, rituals, and regulations. That is not what freedom is. That's the law that is actually that binds us. There is no freedom in the law. The law was meant to point us to our source of freedom, which is only found in Christ. The gospel is good news. We all incurred a debt that none of us had the, had the uh, funds to pay. Jesus said, I'm going to lay down my life, my perfect life, for your life. I'm going to pay the debt that nobody else can pay. God came here as a man, fully God, fully human, died for our sins, lived a, a perfect sinless life. And that was the only, the only way he could was through his divinity. Laid his life down willingly for us because he loved each one of us so very much. He paid the debt that none of us could ever afford to pay for all eternity. And all we have to do is just receive the gift. That's it. That's it. And there is true freedom available to every last one of us. But we have to receive the gift. Not only do we have to receive the gift, we got to actually open it. What good is a gift if you just receive it and set it up on the shelf? God has given us freedom as his gift. Freedom, which gives us intimacy with him, gives us the ability to have intimacy with the creator of the universe. And who better to know how to fix the things that ail us than the one that created us? But we don't want to listen to him. We want to do things our own way because we think we know better. And we don't. I know I didn't. I sure didn't. I didn't. Boy, I thought I knew everything. I thought I was smart. I thought I had everybody pinned down. And I knew. I, oh, I knew. I knew. I knew what you were going to do. I knew why you were going to do it. I knew what you were thinking. You know what? I didn't know anything. Once I got to know Jesus, I got to know that I have a purpose. He has a plan for my life. And I'm walking in that right now. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. Life is never meant to be easy. God never said, there's nowhere in the Bible do you see life as easy. That's Satan's lies in the world to get us to think, if you have any of these things going on, then it's not normal. That's a lie. It's to get us to be deceived and to be bound in, um, in that sticky mess. But in the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. 
it is so fulfilling to be walking in my God-given purpose, to know God, to know God. I know God more than I know anybody else that is ever around me. I know God. How awesome is that? God knows me better than I know myself. God has pointed me to the freedom that I didn't even know how to get to on my own. And Jesus was the only one that could ever help me to do that. And I didn't have to stop doing the things I was doing. That came in time. All I had to do was receive a free gift. All I had to do is say, God, I need your help. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing as well as I think I do. Because I don't feel free right now. That was me back then. I don't feel free right now. But I know there's freedom in you. I hear there's freedom in you. If there's really freedom in you, then help me to see it. Help me to walk in it. Lead me to it. Because I was a hot mess and I was miserable. I was miserable and I was making everybody else around me miserable as well. But there is true freedom found in Jesus and lasting freedom, not just like a little band-aid to put over the, put over the sore, the wound. No, true freedom to where people that meet me now would never have guessed that I used to be a drug addict. People that, uh, that know me now, they would never think that I've been through what I've been through. But God, there is true freedom in Christ. Just receive the gift. He's offering it to you, to every last one of us. No matter what you've done, no matter what you think you, um, where you think you should be at, no matter what age you are, no matter, no matter how bad you have messed up, God's arm is not too short to save you. But we just got to receive it his way. And he knows the best way because he created us. Just receive the gift. As a matter of fact, if you haven't received the gift and you choose to, you feel God pulling on your heart right now, do it now because you're not guaranteed five minutes from now. If you feel God talking to you right now, if you feel like I'm reading your mail, because it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me. If you feel like you are being talked to directly right now and you don't know Christ as your Savior, then I invite you right now to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you put your faith in that and you're saved, period. That's simple. That's simple. That's it. That's all you got to do. And get in scripture. Watch the word of the day as we have here. You know, go uh, listen to other people. Listen to our YouTube channel. Um, for whatever God has given me, I'm, I freely give it to whoever else. And I can't not give it to everyone else because the freedom is so great that if I held that back, I'd be a terrible person. A terrible person. But God's love for people is so great that he won't even let me keep my mouth shut. I try to keep my mouth shut sometimes and he's just like, nope. You know, of course we have to do it in love. We have to do it in the most loving way. But no matter how loving uh, you tell people about the word of God, it, it's offensive to our flesh because it's offensive to our carnal nature. And I get that. And it's usually the word that offends us the most that we actually need. The most. We'll see you next time. Love y'all. Bye.